Don't you, Clive? Right, just arrived at Evesham now with my mate Clive Roberts. Say hello, Clive. Hello, on the boss. Hello. hello. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Clive, Clive. <laughs> you fishing today, Clive? Are you? Oh, He's going to have a go. Am I on there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I am. Right? Yeah, just check. Hello. No, you're not on there. I'm third one. Oh, yeah, you are third. Oh, right. right there. Yeah. Okay, right, there we go. Yeah, so we just arrived now for the draw nice and early. Um, let's see what the draw bank brings out. Right, I've just uh, bumped into John Harper. <laughs> I was saying he's got a big follow and he said, uh, the trouble is I'm showing the crack of my ass. He said, oh, my goodness, so I'll try, try to avoid that if I can. <laughs> Own choice match today. We've got anything between 64, 65 or 63 fishing. We will sort it out, honest. We will be fishing 5, uh, 11, so I'll get it right in a minute, 12 till 5. Please be very careful when you're parking up on the town and driving up towards uh, the, our top pegs. Hopefully, Paul, have you opened the gate at the bottom? Yes, the gate's open at the bottom for you to get through to the cricket club pegs. And we shall be uh, ready any minute now. Just for those of you that are 60 or over, next Wednesday is the veterans match. And we will be calling it the Ray Size Memorial match. And the family have, in actual fact, put in £500 to the pot for the next Wednesday's match only. So it will be well worth winning. So anybody that's over 60, I suggest you book in pretty damn quick. The winner will get a qualifier for Evesham and Witchhaven. If they've already qualified for either one of those, it will go to the second. So hopefully, are we all ready, Rob? Right. Here's a lucky man, yeah. <laughs> comes and goes, boy. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. I know what you're saying. You know. I know. If I have a good peg, it'd be all right. Then. But you both qualified, haven't you? You too. Yeah. Yeah. Free, free, Mr. Mike. Oh, I'm going to stick by you then. <laughs> Draw the same section. <laughs> And someone said to him, yeah. he's like, oh well, so far nobody's been killed. Nobody. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, go on. Uh, that one there, then. That one? Yeah. And Clive Branson 75. is on peg 75. Thank you. Okay. 75. It's not bad, is it? Sorry, John Curtis. Okay, okay lads, I, well, I've drawn. Um, peg 75. Uh, I know <laughs> I, I, the 70s are not that clever, but then 75 on its, on its own is okay for the section. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the zone I'm not sure of because I've got Gary Seaton on the end peg uh, on 88 and they very rarely put that in and when it does it wins the matches. <laughs> so uh, fair dues to Gary. He, he um, I think it's about the second time he's fished this year so uh, he's a cracking angler you know he's a local lad and he knows what he's doing so uh, I'll have my work cut out for the zone. But anyway that's, um, that's life and uh, as I say um, the peg I'm going to 75 I made a video of this many many years ago. And my mate Clive Roberts, who I've come up with today, he drew the one below, and uh, the video crew had a field day, because uh, Clive won the match with £18, and I had £6 and made the frame with it, so, um, but that was many, many years ago, we're talking, move, 35 years ago, 40, 40 years, 35 years, long time, <laughs> a lifetime ago, and things have changed, uh, I saw a couple of lads earlier, and they were saying, like, you know, how people used to fish the stick float, and the wagglers, and now it's pole and uh, feed, of course. That always produces. 
so I'm going to enjoy my day anyway, and let's hope I can uh, get some action today because the weather's not too bad. Um, might might uh, get a bit damp later on, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, let's get to my peg because uh, I just dropped Clive up now. He's on uh, peg 27, which up in the town, which is uh, not a bad peg, you know. It's not a match winning peg, but it's a, a peg that he could catch some fish off. But uh, anyway, let's get to my peg and let's uh, tackle up and let's see how I get on. There you are, peg 75. No steps down. Nice platform. Oh, the water's clear. Nice tree opposite. Yes, long time since I've been down here, and I've noticed uh, some more stages being built opposite because I think more and more of the caravanners are actually fishing these days. Bit of a downstream wind, but uh, you yeah. know, as I say, it's not a bad peg for this for the section. Uh, the trouble is, as I said, it's the zone I've got to worry about if I'm qualifying, so. Uh, Say galley seeding on peg 88, which is uh, the end peg. There you are. All right, let's tackle up. Okay, okay, lads. Right, um, plenty of time. Got about five minutes to go now. So, what I've done, um, I've just plumbed the depth, uh, and about four meters, five meters down the, the peg, it starts to shallow up slightly. Now, um, I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, as I said 30 odd years ago when I've done a video on this, there used to be a peg in between this one and 76. Um, it's not in anymore, it's overgrown. And it's, it, I know it shallows up because my mate won the match of it and I was second off this peg. Um, now, I just run a waggler down and basically, uh, you know, it's a clean bottom. Um, so that's going to be one of my tactics is a waggler sort of in the middle, you know. Uh, going down. I'm also going to put a little chop worm uh, swim in the, you know, just under my uh, feet. Uh, just, you know, just as there's any perch around. But my main attack is going to be, I'm going to start off on the bread punch. I use a two mil uh, bread punch. I've got some bigger sizes and smaller sizes if I need it. Um, obviously I've got uh, my hemp. I got my red maggots and I got my pinkies, and um, I shall obviously revert to the maggot if the if the bread uh, don't work. I'm hoping it, uh, it works. So actually, the bread sort of produces um, almost immediately, so I'll, I'll know in the first few minutes if it's worth persevering on the bread. Otherwise, uh, I'll introduce hemp over that line and um, uh, go on the hemp later on. Um, I, I set up a little stick as well, but down the side because uh, you know I have been picking up yard perch doing that. Um, so there I got all my rigs set up, uh, I got um, a 4 number 4 hemp rig, uh, 6 number 4 uh, for, the, for the, the bread, and um, I've also got, uh, let's have a look, um, as I say, a chop worm rig as well set up. So there we are, so I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rigs, <laughs> so hopefully that should cover most of it. Hopefully um, you can see what's happening as I do the match. So far it's this nice dry day. Let's hope it stays this way. A little breeze on the water, which is good. Um, water's very, very clear though, so uh, there. Yeah. Okay, catch you now in the start. Okay lads, we're just about to start now. I've mic'd myself up, so I'll try and do a little bit of commentary as I'm fishing. Okay. Okay, well I'm about to uh, get my bread punch ready. I've got sealed in plastic bag. So I shall keep it in the bag keep it moist. There's my little bread punch, so I just, right, um, right, I liquidized some bread last night, it's a bit on the dry side, so I might just add a little bit of hemp water with it, 
and a little bit of hemp just to help to uh, get it down the swim a bit um, I think I will probably start uh, with a little feeder um, bread feeder so that, sh that serves two purposes really first is getting the bait down to the bottom because it's about eight foot in front of me and the shallows up to seven foot then um, secondly I might even get a fish on the bread as well <laughs> so I'll give it a couple of chucks of this first see what happens all right so I've loaded the bread now uh, just waiting for the all in this time now Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, nobody shouted, but uh, <laughs> it's one minute past. Okay, I'm going to fish this on the pole line. So just flick this out now. Don't go too far. I might have gone just a little tad too far. I'm going to just um, clip it up at the moment. See what happens. I won't, add, uh, I won't start introducing hemp yet, I'll, I'll give it a little bit, see if I get any response on this. Okay, I'll just reel that in now. I'm using a size uh, 20 um, hook one of those new ca uh, carusos i think i don't know what they're called but uh, they're very good very sharp very similar to the matrix hook size to use which i can't get hold of now unfortunately right just a plugged up with a little bit of a uh, bread so let's see if i can get a bit closer in up there maybe yeah it's okay by the time I clipped it up, it swung, it swung in a little bit, so... Now, I'm actually uh, face, um, facing the, t the tip rod upstream because there's hardly any flow and uh, it'll give me a more direct uh, uh, bite indication. Um, you only put the uh, tip downstream, usually when you put a little bow in the line or when you're fishing a maggot feeder. Uh, so you're looking for drop back bites here. I'm looking for pulls, little pulls. Right, nothing so far. <coughs> oh, excuse the cough. Bloody dogs barking in the distance. Sorry, that little. Red punch is still on there. I will refresh it though, because it got a bit soggy then. <clears throat> As I said, I'm only going to give this a couple of chucks and then I'm going to go on the float then, on the pole. Uh, I won't introduce the maggots yet, but I, or the hemp. Uh, my next plan will be, um, actually I, I will start feeding the inside line in a minute. So I'm just going to start putting a little, some red maggots, only a few little at a time. And that's going to be my little perch line, inside line. So we shall see. Yeah, so today I suppose I'll be having about three different swims going. One on the inside, one on the hemp and bread line, and one on the wacker line further out. I say the bread is normally an instant um, 
you know, instant sort of method. Usually you get a bite straight away, but uh, so far, nothing. Oh, yeah. oh, there was a bite. Oh, a bloody tree. I actually had a bite, would you believe it? <laughs> there you are. And a little pull then. Right, I gotta bloody sort that tree out now, so I think what I might do, I might face the other way. So when I strike, I'll be cleared of the tree. Uh, so that means you won't, you'll be seeing the back of me now, so. Oh, see, it's a nuisance, that tree, isn't it? Right. Okay, um, I've got just a little bend in the tip, so I'll be looking for a pull rather than any drop back bites. Um, I definitely had a bite, that was a, that was, that's a good sign. Tripping some maggots, half a dozen at a time, on the inside. Now the bread punch, obviously with a feeder, it's a static. Oh, this is, that's a little knock then. Uh, it's a static bait. It works better when you've got a bit of a flow, but when it's like very, very slow like this. I don't know where I bumped the bottom then. Oh yeah, no, I got a little bit of weed on the hook, so thought for a minute that might have been a fish, but I'll double punch it this time. So I got a nice bit of punch on the on the hook. All right, let's see what happens now. Bite straight away then. So bite straight away then. Bloody hell. The trouble is they are difficult to hit on the feeder, so um, I think I might go on the pole now in a minute. Now that there might be some fish in the swim. Trouble is, there is a lot of small fish in the river at the moment, so there might be small fish, you know. And I, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, eyes, little eyes. You know, sort of uh, 50 to an ounce, so to speak. <laughs> that was a nice little bite, that last one. Well, at least they served the purpose. Um, I've, you know, it's got bait down to the bottom, and I've had a couple of 
little knocks, little bites, so uh, that's good. Seem to be uh, snagging up a bit there. Eh? Right, I'm gonna have one more one more chuck on this now. Just to see what happens. Now we want that pole then. Yeah, another knock. I think they're small fish, to be honest with you. Yeah, oh yeah, they are. Little roach, yeah. Tiny roach. Now, what do I do? Do I go on the pole or do I give another one this? So another go. Yeah, I was about to announce that fish, so as I say, they're not big. Okay, let's go on the let's go on the uh, let's go on the pole. This should, should be a bit more positive. Right. Uh, I'll be putting little knobs in by hand, so. Uh, so hope the wind don't pick up too much. Right, let's have a look at this. Oh, this wind's uh, definitely going to be a problem. Still now. Marvellous, isn't it? Just as I was about to start, the wind picks up.
and it roots. Now the thing is, do I feed every chuck or do I fish that little ball out? I'm going to fish it out I think, see what happens. I can always introduce more. Right, what I'm doing, I'm just sort of going upstream. I did come in a little bit closer then than the feeder. But that's better because I don't overextend myself. A nice shadow of the tree there, making the float stand out quite nicely. Oh, was that right then? Yeah, I think there's a little bite there. A very fine wire 20 at the moment. Wind's a nuisance. It's very delicate this float and any little movement Put a double on them. I'm going to put a double punch on because see, see what happens. Right. And if they prefer the bigger double punch, I'll put a bigger hook on, but hopefully it should be okay. I'm going to fish the, uh, the balls out until I stop getting bites. Right, winds just died down a little bit. So hopefully that should be perfect now. Landed at this one. I mean, it, this one's about, uh, about three or four ounces. Now, I don't know if you ever get that problem where the hook goes through the lip into the net. And that's the trouble when you're using fine wire hooks like this. So I'm just going to push it back through the lip. Here. Okay. Right, so that was a double punch. Let's do that again. One. 
too. Yeah, the wind has stayed down just a little bit. I could manage to just hold that float perfectly then. But it's just picking up again as I speak. Uh, here we go, bending the pole. Oh. Well, I know weather conditions, are, the whole plan is changing, unfortunately, with the... that quite confident right down so yeah these little um slammer hooks are brilliant it's like uh, when we first had them in uh when i first saw these on the continent we wondered what the hell they were like a like a lit, lit, knitting needle with a bloody um hook on the end hole like a hole <laughs> Did we realise that um, they were disgorgers and they needed to uh, basically thread the line onto the, uh, the little loop and pass that down to the bend and the, the hook to disgorge it and they're brilliant. They, they actually, um, you can unhook deep hooked eels and bream. I wonder why we never u ever used them before, but of course, I mean, I think everyone uses them now. Right. That was a nice confident bite then. I just held it back and it uh right, I'm just just holding it back against the flow. I mean it's not much of a flow but uh the thing is it could be a it could be a service flow could be a service flow and not um, not the actual undercurrent. Yeah, I thought the bread had come off then. So delicate, you know, these small hooks and I so yeah, I think either one or two mil punch. Let's try a single one this time. When the trouble is with bread punching, you, you get them very early on and then they sort of disappear a little bit, so uh, that's something I've got to be aware of. They just dry up for some reason. I don't know whether the fish get full up or they shy off it. Oh, bump that one. That's a problem. Bumping fish, you could spook a shoal. That's in trouble. Right. Oh, they're still there. Put a double punch on again. I'm holding slightly 
further upstream. See if I can hold it over where the feeder went in. And I caught those couple of fish then below the feeder line. competing with anyone as such there's nobody else throwing any ground bait or any bait in by me so I can hopefully keep these fish feeding a bit longer than normal I might have to introduce a little bit more ground bait in a minute a little bit more bread punch well I'm still getting bites I'll keep doing this I think a lot of these fish are a little very tiny fish I think and uh, that's why I think this double punch is probably better on the hook. Okay. I was holding that back then against the float. So, yeah, see, that's very small fish, isn't he? Anyway, keep him coming. I've stopped feeding on the inside at the moment because I want to concentrate on this. I can always come back on the inside line with a maggot. Oh, that's a bite. That was a bite. is a problem with bread uh, like, you know this sort of fishing long poling um, I won a match on this uh, a couple of years ago when I was up on peg 14 I think it was or or 12 one of those pegs and um, I was fishing you know basically um, the hand and uh, 14 pounds you know which is good so, but I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm going to get that sort of weight today but uh, that was a good day that that was in the midwinter, mind you, so... Uh... Right, the wind stopped, that's nice. When the wind stops, I get a better presentation. Ooh, a little knock then. Yep, yeah. Yeah, see? The wind could just stay calm, it'd be much better. Ooh, a little blade. Oh, well. Would you believe it? A little blade. Where's his parents? <laughs> So 
So far, I think I've only put about uh, four nuggets, five nuggets of punch in, which uh, hopefully should be enough for the moment. God, that was a bigger fish. Pumped that one. Bugger. <laughs> Not to make you sway in it. <laughs> oh. As you're looking at this hook, it's more like a 22. <laughs> Never mind. Well, let's hope that I'm spooked ashore. Very small, but uh, they all help. Yeah, it was, about a, it was less than a, about a half ounce, that one. <laughs> That was on a single. I was on a single punch. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a double punch again. See if I can get slightly bigger fish. We give it a double punch. Yep. Yeah, so what I'm doing, I, it's quite a long bristle on this float and um, I'm holding it against the top surface, so basically it's almost like a, a still bait. I am easing it through a little bit, but very, very slowly. Oh, here comes the wind again. This is, this is where it makes it awkward now. You can't quite hold it right. Right, the bread punch is still on. The 
bait is still on the hook, so let's give it another go. It's so clever these fish, and they you gotta get, it's got to be you gotta lay it perfectly to them. Right, let's put another little knob in. And a better fish, that one. That was a good three to four ounces, that one. Now, normally. Bread punch is a sort of a winter sort of me uh, tactic method, and I think because these uh, this venue is sort of hard fished, I think this is why it's uh, it's proving quite successful. I know a few of the boys in the know have been using uh, bread punch, and they've been keeping it quiet to themselves. I managed to find out of one of the boys, so that's the reason I brought it today. As I said, um, I suppose I'm letting the cat out of the bag a little bit, ready for the, uh, the weekend. There they are. Some of these bites are sort of sailaways, but they're the ones you don't hit. Let's try a single. Because if they are small fish, that double punch might be too big for, the, for their gobs.
That's interesting, it's some floating on settling. Yeah, look at that. Bleak on the surface. Oh, he's come off. <laughs> well, yeah, the fruit didn't settle in, so uh, a little bleak took it. Uh, let's go back to a double punch then. I've done, I've floated, um, shotted the float, so I've got four number uh, eights together and then four number tens as droppers below it, so I should create a natural drop in presentation. Hopefully. Hmm. Getting played by little fish, I think. And I'll keep persevering without putting any more ground bait in. Another two ounce fish. Oh, something that punch. Hmm, that's my punch. I got spares. Strange, I should dropped it on the floor or in the water. It should float. Anyway.
It's a sign of old age, that isn't it? When you <laughs> put something down, you can't find it again. It's not strange. So I had a bite, but the punch is still on there. Normally when you get a bite, the punch will come off the hook. Oh, that was a definite bite. <clears throat> I don't know, somebody's telling me to put a little knob, a little knob in again. Just build up a bit of confidence in the fish, I think. Do you know what I might do? I might try a bigger, bigger punch as well. See what happens. I'll try one big punch. You never know. I'm up to a three to four meal now. See what happens. Right, I'll, put, I'll put a punch in this side. Leaks with that then. <laughs> Tracked by the bigger bait on the hook. Do it again. Ooh. So I've gone back to a smaller punch then. I'll put a double on. Right. You see, the problem is, I think the danger is, if you uh, if you put too much punch in, the fish will get, you know, they'll fill themselves up very quickly. So the idea is keep them going on as minimum as possible. the wind again. It's a bane in my life, wind, unfortunately, I don't know. I know we all got to contend with it, but for some reason it affects my fishing, the presentation. Same for everyone, I suppose. Right. Right, I've got a bigger punch on again now, so see what happens.
I'm actually going to take a little bit of shot off. Try and make the fold a bit proud. So So when I get a bite, it will be positive. Because at the moment I'm still with a slightly overshot it. Let's go back to the uh, smaller punch. You don't seem to want that bigger punch for some reason. Start introducing maggots again, I think. Mm. Yeah, see, right straight away then, and a smaller punch. Single one.
Mm. Drop further down for some reason. Of course, you've got to think of a pike in here. Pike could spook them up quite easy. Well, if I'm getting small fish like that, then no wonder I'm missing a few. <laughs> Yeah, I don't say, you know, I know they're not not very heavy, but if I can keep catching, you know, it'd be great to think I could catch them all match. Definitely end up with about four or five pounds then. But we'll see. Now that looks like a that looks like a lift by ten. Hmm. The angle of the camera's moved a little bit, but I uh, hope you can still see me. course you can't really see the float can you on the camera because you know it's not zooming in You know, I think I'm getting bleaked out here. A couple of times now, the float's sort of held up in the water, and by the time it's settled, I don't get a bite. So, hmm. In a minute, I'm going to start going for it a little bit and start putting more 
knobs in. See if I can uh, get the fish to respond a little bit better than they are. You know, I'm getting the odd bite, but they're not queuing up for it. And I think they're small as well, looking at this. Yeah, they're gonna get in mini school now. Yeah, I can't believe out here. Yeah, definitely please look. What are you saying? That bleak's bigger than the road sometimes. <laughs>
There's not much uh, difference between the weight of a bleak and a roach. Come off. Sometimes I wonder if it might be too deep for the punch, but uh, anyway. Oh, it's another one's come off. Oh, bloody hell. Two, they're very small fish, that's the trouble. Minuscule. Right. Put a double punch on it. Definitely small fish now. I'm going to start introducing hemp in amongst the uh, the crumb in a minute, and have a go with the hemp. See what happens. See if they're slightly bigger, those fish.
Yeah, I think they're small fish at the moment because they're actually... Um, I'm just saying the way bites and nothing on the end. Hmm, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a pinky on. See if I pick any fish up, because sometimes that can work. So I'll put a little uh bloody pinky on. Because if you've got fish in your swim, they will take anything that comes to them, so but not necessarily uh Not necessarily, it all depends. If they got the taste for the bread, then obviously... Right, I'll try this, see what happens. It's a pity, pity you can't get artificial bread. <laughs> bread punch that stays on the hook. I suppose you could, there's a way of doing it, I'm sure. Yeah, look at that, straight away, look. In fact, it's a little uh, skimmer blade. So try that again. And find a nice juicy one. There's one. Mmm, got a bite there on it. Probably small fish. Ooh. 
Надо быть. Mm, it can't bites, but uh, can't eat them. I think they're those little mini school little roach. You know, tiny things. The blade. Oh. Who would have thought? Oh well. I'll keep on putting the pinky on and just keep feeding uh, the punch. Because I think what's happening is the punch is attracting the roach, and I think you've got those skimmers hanging around you know, little blades, and they're having a little pop of the maggot instead. Okay, lads, right, um, two hours into the match. Um, the first hour, hour and a half, I was catching those little fish, and now it, they dried up. Last half hour, I've been really, really struggling, so uh, I introduced a couple of... Um, nuggets of uh, pinkies and I had a quick uh, couple of, had a blade and two little roach and that two little roach and that was it so um, now uh, Kevin Albee on peg 78 just come up and said he's been struggling he's only got a couple so you know it's the usual there uh, even you know <laughs> it's a struggle like I've been feeding uh, maggots across to the middle with a waggler and I, I give that a go in a minute see what happens um, I'm still on the pole so um, you know uh, I've got a little pinky on at the moment. I thought I had a bite then, but I, I think it, it just dragged under. Not a sign of anything at the moment. I think that's a little dragon under then. Yep, I think I'll, go, I think I'll have a little go on the waggler now and see what happens. You never know. Somebody came up and said somebody had some troublets on the waggler down there, but that's down in the 80s where there, there's some trees, you know. Just shallows up by there and goes under, so I haven't had anything, so okay.
Okay, like I said, I was uh, um, I had a couple on a wag there, but um, I can get little ones on the on the inside, but they're very very small, so it's probably not worth going for really. Slightly bigger on a waggler when I get them. <laughs> Not that many, but apparently um, it's fishing quite poor anyway. So as I say, any fish is worth catching at the moment. Right. Nip the end then, small fish. Oh, that's it. All out, I think. Yep. It's all out. Just hear them shouting now. Oh, well. Okay, <laughs> the match is over. Well, it was an interesting match, if nothing else. <laughs> I started off on the uh, the punch. I had a couple of um, little roach and little blades. Uh, they died off after about an hour and a half. And then um, I sort of scratched around a little bit. And then I went on the waggler in the last sort of hour. And I've had um, three or four nice dumpy roach and a blade. So there we are. Maybe I should change a bit earlier. But uh, as I, I've, I gather it hasn't fished all that well, so uh, it'll be interesting for the weigh-in anyway. Um, i got Lee Gardner in my section. He's going to be hard to beat. Kevin Elby, he's always uh, catches a few as well. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, fingers crossed. Let's wait for the weigh-in. There you go, Clive. Lee, a good four plus. To be in the frame. Do. Four foot. You want this Four sheet? plus. Or are you going to wait till we do them all? Yeah, I'll rest the case both ends. We've still got another, you know, 12 to do. I'll take this one and I'll come back and All right, mate. Well, promise. Yeah. yeah. I'll be sure you yeah. <laughs> oh, 
splitting up. Four, one, twelve. Oh. What are you running that as up here, bro? Down there. Down there. The start of the section. Well, you went the boom blood didn't work. I'll see with that third. Yeah. Hey. Third. third. No, no, no. Fifth or sixth. Yeah. <laughs> All right, quiet. Okay, lovely. Thanks. Do you want to switch it off? Hey. Do you want me to stop it? Yeah. Okay, there you are. <laughs> for uh, for one and three quarters, I think you said. So, um, uh, one bad day's fishing at the end, uh, you know. Um, I think I probably won the, the small section. You know, I probably won the section. I'm not sure about the zone because Gary's on the end and um, my chances are he's going to probably have more than that because, you know, he had a pound in the first hour, I was told. So, uh, you know. Uh, when the boys are coming up now, are going to tell me, I expect, what's down there, but... Yeah, yeah, mate. Um, it was a bit more than I thought, honestly. I didn't think <laughs> four pound one. What did they, Lee have? Uh, I don't know yet. Yeah. Oh. Just walked down. Uh, I won nine twelve. Yeah, won nine twelve. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna have a look at results. No, I'm gonna put results board and see where, see where we are. But it never even entered what you had. Forty-five to fifty-two. Don't put that on. With four with three nine of peg sixty-two. Sixty-seven to seventy-two. Brian Pollard with two eleven at twelve of peg seventy-two. Seventy-four to eighty-two is Clive Brands. Okay, there you are. Then so I've had a section when. Um, the annoying thing is, I was four ounces away from fifth, and that made a difference of 120 quid to 40 quid. So, anyway, that's all good. We've had a good day. Four pound, four pound five was fifth, and I had four pound one. So, there you are. Um, a certain angler, no names mentioned, one happy because uh, he asked me what I had at the, uh, at the end of the match, and I said two pound ish. <laughs> and in fact, um, I had four, and uh, well, of course, you know. He wasn't very happy because he, he would have gone home otherwise. He waited to to weigh in. But anyway, forget that. <laughs> See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.